Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone, or wherever you're watching from all over the world. It is a beautiful Sunday morning here in the United Kingdom where we are based. We are so happy to have you wherever you are. This is the time to bring your family, text your friends, get everyone to tune in because we are about to have a Holy Ghost party. Okay, so guys, we're going to get right into opening prayer. So just, you know, just lift up your hands. We're just preparing for this service. Let's just thank the Lord for for the words that we're about to receive. Um, if you can't speak in tongues, please feel free to speak in your own understanding. But if you can speak and pray in the Holy Ghost, please do. Oh, se krinda kas kolobros kalabranda ze ki predis kze ki ta prado skush kele brendis loko protus kalabranda kas kataya rokosh kalabranda. Thank you for this word that we're about to receive, Lord. Bo se krindes kele brendis si kata rosh kalabranda kisus monto proskolo. An impactful service it will be. Oh, Shekrende Sitas, Rosolo Brondo Kos Calabranda, Rakash Calabrandi Kisas, Rotopos Calabrandi Ki, Rosolo Bro Shalabranda Kisakete. Yes, people are coming to Christ as a result of this service and the words and the ministrations that they will hear. Oh, Sekatekete, Rontoko Bradish Krada Sata, Ranka Pali Krizga Ekranda Soto. Oh, shata prandi kesete. Oh, kali kranda ka ataka sata. Oh, thank you, precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So I trust you're fired up. You are ready to, you know, worship the Lord throughout this whole service. But let's just get right into praise and worship and let's welcome the choir.
Okay, welcome to today's Rhapsody segment. It's where we hear the words that are going to change your life before the actual message for today's Sunday service. So I hope you're ready. I hope you're stirred. It's Sunday the 14th and the message for today is do it for his glory. So we're going to start with the lead verse in Philippians chapter 2 verse 3. Which says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Wow, this is so powerful already. You know, the Amplified Classic Translation puts our theme verse in a clearer perspective. Pastor goes on to say, it says, do nothing from factional motives through contentiousness, strife, selfishness, or for unworthy ends, or prompted by conceit and empty arrogance. You know, the people of the world compared to the people in ministry. What is the thing that drives them? It is vain glory, selfish ambition. That is the difference of what drives them to work and what drives us to work. It is selflessness because we're not doing this work for ourselves. We're doing it for God. Yet we need to check ourselves. Are we truly doing it for God? Or are we doing it for ourselves? It needs to come out of a place of purity. Hmm. If you know, you know. If you don't know, pray that your eyes be flooded with light. Praise God. So pastor goes on to say, some have stopped study that portion and ran off with the idea that what, what Elijah did was to project himself for others to applaud but that's not true the prophet challenged King Ahab to gather the Israelites and the prophets of the false gods 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah of Mount Carmel they were to prepare a sacrifice and call down fire from heaven to consume the sacrifice. The one who succeeded would be revealed as the true prophet. Are you following? Each group prepared a bull on the altar and called on their God to send fire from heaven. The prophets of Baal called on their God and cried and cut themselves. But there was no response from their God. Lol. <laughs> That's jokes. Because their God's not real. <laughs> you see, we serve a living God. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Imagine you're cutting yourself, calling onto your God. No, no answer, just crickets. <laughs> okay, <I'm laughs> I have to move on. <laughs> Okay, that's a meme. We need to meme that 2021, you know. When it was Elijah's turn, Prophet Elijah, it says he drenched the sacrifice with water. Okay, are you following? He's going to call from fire from heaven and to flex on these haters, he drenched the sacrifice with water. Oh my days. Then... He called to God and God sent fire from heaven. Oh my days. The fire completely engulfed the sacrifice. Read Elijah's words in 1 Kings 18 36. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. You see, Isaiah wasn't doing this out of selfish ambition. He was following the guidance of God's Spirit. You might be doing something as a Christian, as, you know, as guided by the Spirit. And people are saying that you're proud or arrogant. Pastor is basically saying, don't let them move you. Because if you truly know you're doing it for God, let God be true and every man be a liar. <laughs> Praise God. So Isaiah was following the guidance of God's Spirit. The confrontation wasn't a show of his sense of self or self-importance. It was solely based on the Lord's guidance. Hallelujah. Observe the result. 
the Israelites <laughs> lost faith in Ahab and followed Elijah's guidance in trusting and recognizing God's so sovereignty. So a lot of big words here, you know, I need to go to um, DuckDuckGo dictionary after this. You know, if you know, you know, we don't use Google anymore. Praise God. What Elijah did glorified the Lord God of Israel. That's the God we serve. Uh, you know, before the people. And Pastor goes on to say, whatever you do for the Lord shouldn't be out of selfish ambition or conceit. <laughs> it should be for His glory. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah. Well, you must learn to follow the Spirit in the Word, by the Word, and through the Word, just like Elijah did. And your works and your ways will glorify the Lord. I feel like going to further study. There's only one scripture, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 30 to 39. Let us go. First Kings chapter 18, verse 30 to 39. I'm reading in the King James Version. Okay, okay, this is going to be powerful already now. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullocks in pieces and laid them on the wood. And he said, fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. <laughs> and the water ran round about the altar and he filled the trench also with water. I hope you're following. You know, sometimes when you're reading scripture like this, people are like that's dead and they're just not following they switch off but this is the blessing because God is speaking to you directly say God is talking to me we continue reading verse 36 if you missed it just go back and watch it and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said Lord God of Abraham Isaac and of Israel let it be known this day that thou art God of I in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice in the wood and the stones and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. Verse 39. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Can you be the Elijah of your generation where people fall on their faces because of the miracles you're producing? Say, I am the Elijah of my generation. Glory to God. Man sun I will not leave before rapture until I truly become the Elijah of my generation until I do things for God that decimate the kingdom of Satan <laughs> until I do things that are going to have the ripple and butterfly effect everywhere all over the world and when I go to heaven people are going to be walking up to me people I've never met before saying I'm the reason I'm here you're, no you're the reason I'm here Oh, man, I'm glad I read the further study. Let's take the prayer, shall we? <laughs> Praise God. Say it and mean it. I speak words into our lives. Dear Father, your word is the light that guides my thoughts, plans, decisions, and helps me navigate through life in glory. I follow your guidance solely and my heart is devoid of conceit. Through your word I receive direction, illumination and insight into the mysteries and realities of the kingdom. In Jesus' name, Amen. Glory! Come on. Hallelujah.
Thank you so much for joining me for this Rhapsody segment. I hope you're all blessed. And I'll see you next time. This year, 2021, our year of preparation marks the Messenger Angel's 20 years anniversary. It's been two decades of continuous spread of God's Word and changing lives in over 3,000 languages of the world. There is an urgency to reach more people with this beautiful gospel of Christ. So join us for the next edition of ROPC, Rhapsody Online Prayer Conference, the first in the year of preparation. The 2021 first edition of ROPC will be taking place on the 26th to 27th of February and will feature sessions of intense prayers, ROPC Lingua, and concluding with Rapathon at ROPC. You can participate on RhapsodyTV.live and on all Rhapsody platforms. Date again is February 26th to 27th. It's a whole new dispensation of grace poured out for billions of people all around the world as we pray and reach them with Rhapsody of Realities, setting new records with Rhapsody of Realities. Watch out for more details. God bless you. Say home.
I'm moving to another topic now. I hope you are ready for this. Are you sure? Yes. I have um, three topics I would like to introduce you to. Um, but I would, I would deal with one today. Then hopefully as time comes, uh, goes on, I would, um, I would explain the rest. No. There was a time, I think, uh, last day, the Spirit of God was ministering something to me um, about blindness. And it showed me three different types of blindness. What three different ways blindness can occur. The word blindness. We can give me the dictionary definition for blindness. There should be several definitions. Can somebody read that for me quickly? does it mean to be blind come on okay the ability to do what so the state or condition of being unable to see so when I say there are different types of blindness which means there are different things that can cause someone to be in the state or condition of being unable to see. Is there any other de 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 definition? Lack of perception, lack of judgment, lack of what? Awareness and what? Ignorance. Any other definition? Anybody else can give me another definition? The inability to see anything, including light. See, these three definitions begin to give us a perspective of our subject today. Praise God. I'm going to introduce this topic, then I'll go into the second topic. Because this will give you a, a, a foundation. I said, the first type of blind, blindness is the absence of, of light. The absence of light. Which means... You have the ability to see or someone would have the ability to see, the ability to perceive, yet will not be able to perceive because light is absent. The reason why you are seeing me right here, right now, is because light is falling on this person, this sub object, and the light is traveling into your eyes. Praise God. So when there is no light, right, it will not cast the image to your eyes. So there's something actually falling on me and bouncing on me and bouncing, you know, towards you into your eyes. Praise God. That is why if the room is dark and there's a light right in front of me and you are behind me, there's a possibility that you would not see definition. You only see a, is it a silhouette now? A silhouette, pardon? A silhouette. Is it not a silhouette? Is the silhouette not the black cabin of... How many of you are in uni here? How many of you are in uni? Sure? Do you know what a silhouette is? Okay, my goodness. Is that an African word? <laughs> it's English, eh? Good. Glory to God. Glory to God. Because 
the light, for example, why can't you see, for those of you behind me, why can't you see my eyes? Because the light that is falling on my face is bouncing that way. So it hits me and goes in that direction. That's why you cannot see my eyes. You are seeing my back because the light is hitting me from this point and going that direction. Are you following me? So now that I've turned to you, the light is hitting me now and going constantly to you. So the moment you take off the light, you still have eyes, but there is no image traveling to your eyes. Therefore, you become unaware of what is around you. You become unaware of reality. It is real. It is present, but lack of perception. Hence, you, it would affect your behavior. It will affect how you relate and the experiences you have in life. Praise God. So, it is darkness. That is why Apostle Paul prayed that the eyes of your understanding be what? Flooded with light. That you may what? Know. Be aware. I do. Because with the absence of light, you will not be aware of what already exists. Which means, he's telling you, I may be in front of you. If there is no light, you will be unaware of that which is present. So he says, let there be light so that you will be aware. Praise God. Because there is light, guess what? My animation is structured in this pattern. The reason why I lifted up my legs is because there was light. I'm aware. Now I am relating with this plane differently. Because I can see that there is a step. You see? I'm going around the pulpit because there's light. You see, my decisions in life, my movement in life is based on light. So I perceive and I animate based on my perception differently. That is why you see some people, they woke up in the night and they're screaming. You come and go, why are you screaming? And they're pointing somewhere. Say, it is there. You look and they say, there's nothing there. It is not there. Why? Because there is a type of light that has casted something into their eyes. So they are seeing willy willy. Do you understand? They are seeing something. <laughs> so what, because of what they see, they animate and scream in accordance to the reality of what they experience based on the image cast into their eyes by light. Do you understand that? So which means you, you can have your eyes and still not be able to perceive. Blindness number one, yeah? The second one so that's the absence of light. The second one is the prevention of light. The first is what? The absence of light. Blindness as a result of the absence of light. The second is blindness as a result of prevention from light. The Bible talks about the, uh, the fact that up to this day there is a veil on their heart. Which means you are covered. There can be light in this place. I have eyes to see. But the moment you tie my eyes, darkness comes. So the light is present. Remember the first one, the, the light is absent. Now the light is present. You are ready to see. But there's something blocking it. What happens? You are blind. Still, you cannot perceive. There is presence of light. The ability to see is present. Light is present. Yet, perception is absent. Why? Because of an obstruction.
The Bible says we should pray for the veil in the hearts of men to be taken away. Why? Because they've been veiled. Oh. So they are ready to see. But um, it is very. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That also affects your animation or affects the person's animation and relationship with the world, with his environment, with reality. Then there's a third one. It says the absence of the ability to see. Or the defect in that which, which you see. Which is, there is light, there is no veil, and yet the person cannot see. Why? Because their eyes are damaged. The ability to see is not there. They are blind. You know, well, sometimes you meet an unbeliever, you have to understand what you're dealing with and know how to pray. You meet an unbeliever and they cannot see the glory. And you're wondering why. It says the God of this world has blinded their eyes that they, so that they will not see the glorious gospel. So you are shining, but if the person is blind, they can't see the light. So you've got to pray and open the, the, the eyes of their heart. So that when you show up, they see the lights. Glory to God. You see, this is why it's important that you pray before you go on evangelism. Because you may shine like the star. If they are blind, your brightness is of no use to them. You got to cause their eyes to open. The eyes of their heart to be to, to, to be open. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. With this in mind, understanding how blindness works, and you begin to now see different. When someone cannot perceive something, or something is not perceived in scriptures, or you know, uh, uh, in life, or something, some, you are wondering, what is it? Is it that the, the, there is no light? So if if there is no light, what do you do? You sh throw lights. The word of God is what? You share the word of God and all of a sudden, light comes. The person is ready. Then there are those where you are sharing the word or you're throwing lights and they can't see because something is obstructing. So you address that thing or you take the veil away. Apocalypse, a revelation. To reveal so either veil on on the subject or veil on the object it is shielded away and that's what the word revelation is about which means it is present it is there but not perceived cannot be related with it is covered so the moment the veil is taken away you're like ah i knew there was something but i didn't quite know what all of a sudden apocalypse take place a revelation takes place. It is revealed. The veil is taken away. It's unveiled. For example, you can see that place is covered. There's something there. You know there is something there. But it's, you don't know what to do with what is there. Or how to think of what is there. Or how to relate with what is there. Because it is veiled. The moment it's taken away, that's an apocalypse. It's like, aha, you know something is there, but you don't know what is there or how to relate to what is there. The moment it's taken away, you can ask, oh, you know what? Ah, the grams, you know. I know what uh, Sharon would do when she has an apocalypse of what is there. She would definitely take one for the grams. No, she would. She wouldn't miss it. Neither would Nafema. Or beat by Gloria. Those three, I can assure you, 
when they come for a meeting like this, they must go with something. <laughs> they must. They, they can't go empty-handed. A picture must go with them. Praise God. So that's what apocalypse is. A revelation. So when the word of God comes to you and the light turns on you, like, I've been hearing the word, but all of a sudden, the veil is taken away. Revelation comes. Now you relate with the object. You relate with the word. You relate with that that has been revealed to you. And you begin to use it in your life. That's why when the revelation hits you, you may go and do this. You, you may go and do the same thing that you are doing, but it will come out with a different outcome because uh, this is what I know. Uh, that we have moved. Amen. This is how I know that things are no longer the same. Because something has happened to us. It cannot be the same. No, it can't. Because we've moved. Grace has increased. I know it. I know it. Praise the Lord. Then, there is a, there's a third one where the ability to see is taken away. The ability to see is taken away. Those ones, they need to be born again. Because they don't have the ability. So you need to give them the ability. You need to give them the tool to see. Then shine the light on what they should see and unveil that which should be, that, that which should be seen. Praise the Lord. You understand that now? Now, having understood that, let's now look at light and space. Light, space, and time. Then, the third topic we're going to look at if we have the opportunity to is light and projection. Praise God. Is it, is, uh, this is an introduction, okay? I'm just giving you concepts. And uh, maybe in another minute we'll go through some scriptures. Uh, because of the time that we've spent, uh, um, we'll, make, we'll just, I'll give you an introduction. When we see some, oh, Sakabaya, speaking other tongues. Praise the Lord. If you study light, for example, the sun, they will tell you that the sun is so uh, this a uh, billion years away from the earth. There was a study uh, I was um, looking at, and they wanted to understand, um, I think, the law of relativity, and they needed to use light. And when they used light, they realized that um, there's a law of relatability with, with atoms, okay, when they split. That's not my sub, sub, the subject matter. That's something entirely, you know, different. But the thing here is this. They, in order to get that, how they came to that conclusion was they used light to trigger the tests but they said seeing that um, the light is on earth the light would have been influenced by other materials the test itself could have influenced the light to behave a certain way and trigger it to respond in a certain way which means the atoms that are present would cause it to behave the light so it's like what should be independent of the test to test the test is being influenced by the test itself so, they said, how are they going to do this? So, they chose to use light from a star that is billion years away. Why is that? 
the light that is going to trigger the test would have already traveled, left its source billions of light years away. Hence, the source cannot be influenced by the test to send a particular light or instruction in line with what the test is doing. I don't, I don't understand. The light that is on, your, on the earth right now has, travel, it has traveled for a long time. Do you understand? It is just reaching us now. So that light that they were using was already on its journey. It has already shone forth and it is traveling this way. So they are using it now, but it has left its source a, a long time ago. Right? So it couldn't have been influenced by what is happening now because it has already been sent before the test began. So which means the test is accurate and the light is not influenced by the test presently because it's like the, the, the light was sent. Imagine the light was like a, a letter was posted to someone two years ahead of time. Then a news broke, right? Then the letter corroborated the news. You cannot say that the letter was sent because of the news. Because the letter left its source two years prior to the news coming. Are you understanding this? So they needed that and they used that light to do that. And they realized that the law of relativity, relativity was accurate. Praise God. I'll show you the behavior of light. Amen. Hmm. So now coming to where we are right now. You can, I can see you, you can see me, it's in, in less than seconds, right? In the speed of light, right? My image travels through space in time to your eyes. And your eyes captures and you know that I am present. Amen. And because you know I am present, you begin to animate in line with the information that light has brought to you. Okay? So, if we're to slow down the speed of light, right, you would see how it's, my image is traveling to your eyes before it hits you. Which means, if time is slowed down, and the light that is traveling to your eyes is coming that direction and you move you will not see me i will not exist even though i am there yet you will not know i am there because the light that is bringing that image of my presence to you did not get to you in time for you to see me praise god do you know why i cannot see somebody that is at the gate who can tell me why? Huh? Eh? Aha, uh -huh. the second type of blindness. It is what uncovered. So the light that is meant to bring the image of the person at, from the gates has been obstructed by the walls and the buildings. But if these walls are not here and the obstruction is not there, what happened? I will see the person because the light will have a chance to travel to me. Okay. How many of you are you following? You are not sleeping. Okay, okay. Praise God. Dun, 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 dun. So what, what does this mean? Let me help you. You know, we're going to we're going to understand our world and reality differently when the master comes. Because you understand that there are several dimensions. And uh, you see, the, uh, I, I wish to draw for you or show you the image. The, we live in a three-dimensional world, right? So we have the X, Y, and Z axis. Praise God. We have the X, Y, and Z axis. I wish I had a diagram to, to help you do this. Uh... I, I wish we, we can we can do because you need to see this. 
the a board uh, that we can use because describing it um, may not work for you is it possible I want to know if it's possible so the, I, I, I need to explain the, the second and third dimension to you to begin to see the possibility of what the fourth dimension will be praise God hallelujah are you here so I'm gonna show you this is a two-dimensional world okay praise God so you have this okay so you have four sides in a two-dimensional world are you following me so you have the x-axis and the y-axis in a two-dimensional world at every given point in time are you following me now so if there is a being existing in the two dimension this is the perception that the being is going to have so uh, he took it where is the uh, the wipe here exactly really can i have the wipe please okay so if i have um, a two-dimensional being living in this two dimension the being would be like this whatever we right i know the bible not drawings this being will only see this side of this box are you following me the being can only go this direction this direction this direction this direction okay thank you just put it down there this direction these are all the directions that 2d provides do you understand so whichever angle you want do you understand all these are arrows praise god so this being can only exceed this image in this direction so what is this being seen in the 2d he's seen a line do you understand me because he's seen from this perspective it the, the 2d the 2d image cannot do like this it can only do like that and that okay in every angle it's so it can only see a line a line hello are you following me so when it looks at this image what do we see what do, do we see a square right but he can never see a square his dimension only allows him to see this square as a line if no matter how much he goes around he will always see a line how many of you are following me up to this point good if he's if what someone will say what if we put a circle what will he see he's still going to see a line so the only two shape the only shapes that this guy can see is a dot and a line so the line just keeps getting bigger. So the more you introduce this circle into his world, he'll keep seeing the line keeps increasing. Right? And as it goes far away from it, it decreases into a dot and, miss, and disappears. Praise God. But you are what? Seeing what? A circle. It only has the X and Y axis. Guess what? If I put something inside this circle, this guy will never see inside the circle. He will never be able to see it. The only, or if I create a box, that we don't, I don't, the only way this guy will see what is inside this circle. What will he see inside the circle? What will he see inside this circle? A line. So the only way he's going to see the line inside the circle is if I take this off. 
he will see a line inside the circle. You see it? That's the only access. But guess what? You are in the 3D world. You don't need an entrance to see that there is something in the box. Hello? Why? Because you are seeing from another, in another perspective. I can see what is, what's in the box. The star. In your two, three-dimensional world, you can see a, a square. You can see many sides. Why? Because you have the, is it X, Y, and Z axis. Okay? So, there is an axis shooting this guy. So, if this is the X and Y axis, the Z axis is my pen popping out from here, out. It, for this guy, his direction is here and there. Does he have a direction this way? But is there a direction this way? Okay, you're following me. The fact that he cannot come this way, does that mean this way does not exist? So if this guy wants to experience anything other than a dot and a, and a line, what would you advise him to do? Huh? Understand? Understand? You want to explain a star to someone that's never seen a star? Tell me, what does inner quick look like? Huh? Inner quick. Hmm, sweet, sweet. How do you explain a, a, a star to a two dimensional uh, being? Does he have the capacity or ability to comprehend it? He can never comprehend it. So if you want this two-dimensional being to see a star, what would you tell the two-dimensional being? Huh? He has to come out of that dimension. So which direction should he move? This way. But he cannot, he doesn't have a this way. So, the first thing you have to do to this being is to tell him that there is a direction this way. He must first believe that there is a direction this way. After believing that there is a direction this way, you now begin to give him and introduce him to how he can move this way. So, when you tell this being, keep pushing, it looks impossible. But there is a direction this way. Ah. To him it does not exist. But it is real. There is a direction what? This way. So you say, push. Go that way. You say, but if I turn like this, nothing. He says, push. So do, do as you, do as you are meant, do what you could not, what, just be doing in that direction. Do you understand? You say, but I can't lift my hand. L do. Are you getting me? Praise God. Now, we know the challenges that the two-dimensional guy faces. Let's come to the three-dimensional guy, you. Praise the Lord. The three dimension has what? X, Y, and what? Okay. So, in a three dimensional world, the. Oh, precious Holy Spirit, help me. Aha! The Lord is faithful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, okay, Holy Spirit, let's go. <laughs> Sweet Spirit of God. So, in a two, three dimensional world, this is what? A cube. So, I can see one side, 
two side, three side, four, five, six. Yes? But if you put something inside this cube, does anybody have a box? Let me use a real one. Can I get that gift bag? Somebody's own, right? Is it mine? Thank you. <laughs> if you put something inside this bag, how many of you know what is inside? Do you know why you cannot see what is inside? <laughs> Kill him. Kill him. <laughs> how many of you know what's inside? How many of you can see what is inside? Why can't you see what is inside? But do you know that there is a direction where a, a being that exists in the fourth dimension sees what is inside without opening it. Just like you saw what was inside the box in the two-dimensional world box. All the sides were blocked for the 2D guy. But you, the 3D man, could see inside. There is a direction that makes inside this box exposed to the being in the fourth dimension. There is a direction. Uh -huh. So, when your zona secretary last year or two years ago told you to face the wall, do you remember? I said face the wall and call the money out of the wall. I was telling you what you were telling this 2D guy. You told him to face this side, eh? right? Where there is no road. I told you to face the wall where there is no road because there is actually a road. There is actually a road. There is a way. I said there are regions. There is a road and there is a way. Oh, if you catch this. Now, there are several shapes other than circle, square, star, hexagon, pentagon, da da da, whatever it is. Just like you introduced your shape into the two dimensional world and all he saw was a line. No matter what the image or the shape that the four dimensional being brings into your world, you would only see it as a circle, a ball. A square you would not be able to see what it truly is in its entirety its true shape if you bring it into your dimension so the two the four dimensional man will have to take you into his dimension to actually see the subject or the object for what it truly is Just like if that guy comes out now, he will see square, he will see star, he will see rectangle, he will see triangle, because he's left his 2D world. If I take the triangle into his world, praise God, let's try it, let's try it, let's take the triangle into his world. I brought the triangle into his world. What can he see? A line. But what's this? What's this? Mm -hmm. Mathematics. Uh -huh. Hectagon, pentagon, heptagon, zeptagon. Please, are we in uni? What is this? How many sides? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ha Heptagon. Okay. Sister Cassie says heptagon. I believe her. <laughs> Praise God. What is this? No, 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 no. <laughs> what am I drawing? 
Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, my core rabbi. Lecturer. Nafima said, quadrilateral, she said. <laughs> Give you the credit for this one. It's not singing. Praise God. Okay, good. But at the end of the day, what does that guy sing? So in order for this guy to see all this fancy shape that you call it, it has to come out from his dimension. There are shapes that exist. There are realities that exist. And the fourth dimension and only when you go into that dimension that you begin to see for what it truly is. So all you see is not all there is. Put your hands together for Jesus. My gosh, that was hot. It was hot, wasn't it, guys? Oh man, oh man, oh man. You know, thinking about the reality of what time, space, you know, dimensions and light is. I trust that that was such a deep revelation, you know, that you received in your spirit today. And it's the kind of thing that you need to watch time and a time, time and time again. So um, this video will still be up. Please do make sure you meditate on the words and the realities that have been shared with you. Because I know you've never heard anything like that before. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So now we are going to worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. If you want to give any special givings, please do you'll see some details that are currently showing on your screen. So guys, as you are, you know, just thanking the Lord for the word that you've received and you are giving your, your offerings, we are going to be enjoying a beautiful ministration from the choir.
for that choir what a beautiful ministration that was we have been so blessed so 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 blessed okay so now um, if you can just kindly stretch your hands towards the TV get all of those around you to do so as well and um, we're just gonna pray and bless the offering Kasi brinde kis kere brondo kosh kala brandes bos kala branda kaski te cases father we thank you for the privilege that it is to give we thank you for, for the, how you've sanctified our tithes, our offerings, and all of our special seeds that we've given today. For Lord, that we know we've given it for the extension of your kingdom, for this work to continue to move forward. Thank you, Father, for we know that our offerings, our givings are sanctified. They are hallowed. Yes, they are deemed holy in your sight. Father, we thank you because they are going towards the extension of your kingdom. Even beyond the amount that has been given, yes, so much will be able to come out of it. Father, we thank you for the grace that comes with what we have given. In your mighty name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. Wow, I trust you guys have had a beautiful service. But just before we go, I'd love to share some announcements with you. So as usual, if you are a first timer, um, I know that there's so many of you, I can see you all right now at home with your glowing, excited faces. We are so happy to have you. Um, and you should see some details on your screen on how you can further engage with us. Um, we'd love to find out more about you and be acquainted with you here in BRW UK Zone A and how you can make it at home. So um, do just contact us through the details that will be showing on your screen. Um, we'd love to get your details and email address number, um, you know, just to find out more about how we can further connect with you. Praise the Lord. So also, we are so excited to be announcing the Word Drive that is starting today. Glory, glory. I know you're all shouting in your houses. Praise the Lord. So the Word Drive is a campaign that is being run by the Pastor Chris Digital Library in conjunction with Campus Ministry. So it's especially for us and I'm so excited. I trust we're all excited across the zone um, and it commences today actually. So please do contact the person who invited you to service or um, your, your pastor, your group pastor, your coordinator to find out more about how you can participate. Praise the Lord. I know we've come to that time again, guys. It is the end. It is the conclusion of this service. But I know that, you know, the words that you've heard today, they're, they're eternal. So continue to meditate on them. And I know that these words will never leave your spirit. Praise the Lord. So if you can just kindly join me as we close in prayer, and then we're going to go right into saying the grace. Father, we thank you for the words that we've received today in our hearts. 
We thank you for how it will so impact our living and impact the lives of those around us. Father, we thank you because we're so conscious of what your word is and how the future is now, as you've told us, Lord, through the man of God, Pastor Iron. Father, we thank you because we know that we're, we're moving by the speed of the Spirit as a result of the words that we've so received into our spirits today. Father, we are grateful and we celebrate your name. For in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And let's say the grace and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness, mercy and favor follows us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We will see you next week. Praise the Lord. I hope you guys have a lovely, lovely week.